Hey Dream Chasers, it's the guy who took over JC's channel, and today I'm going to answer your frequently asked questions about drawing tablets. I made a video called The Beginner's Guide to Tablets, and almost two years later I'm still getting questions about it, so this video is long overdue. But real quick, first, shout out to all my lefties! I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can, starting with the most common ones. The first being, how does it work? A lot of people are confused about how a drawing tablet works as compared to a mouse, so I'm going to do a quick demo. When you have a drawing tablet that has a screen, like an iPad or a Cintiq, you're drawing directly on the screen, and that's really straightforward. Unfortunately, those are pretty pricey, so you probably are going to start off with a tablet like mine, uh, which has a surface you draw on that's mapped to your monitor. And a lot of people are confused about how does it know when to click and draw versus move the cursor around. And it's actually pretty simple. So when you want to use it as a mouse, you actually hover your stylus over the surface without touching it. And it can register that you're moving your cursor. And once you press down, that's registering it as a click, which in an art program means you're drawing and making marks. But unlike a mouse, which only can tell if you're clicking or not clicking, right, on or off, this can tell how hard you're pressing down. That's pressure sensitivity. And if you're using an art program that can recognize levels of sensitivity, then you can make your lines thicker or thinner or darker or lighter, depending on your settings. And it's a lot more natural. It feels a lot more like drawing with you know, a pen or a pencil. And if you use it in a program that doesn't recognize pressure sensitivity, it still works just like a mouse. You can mouse around, you can click, and there's even a button on most styluses that you know, you can set as a right-click button, so it does everything that your mouse would do. You technically could replace your mouse with it. I find that a little awkward to, to use it for everything, but uh, it's a good way to practice, which I mentioned in the other video. Another really common question is, is it hard to draw while looking at your screen? So it's really hard to answer that question after almost 14 years of using a tablet, but the short answer is you definitely get used to it. I think a lot of people assume that you need this really expensive screen tablet because it sounds too hard to learn how to do this, but it's really not as hard as it sounds. It just takes some practice. Because how it works is your tablet is mapped to your screen. So when you move your stylus to the top left corner of the tablet, your mouse cursor will appear on the top left corner of the screen. And you can practice just moving your stylus around the tablet and seeing where the cursor ends up and then before you even press down, you see where your cursor is. So you know exactly where you're gonna draw before you actually draw. And once you get a tablet and you play around with it, it's not that confusing. It seems like it would be, but you really do get used to it. Another question I get a lot is, do you need a computer? And that kind of depends on what kind of drawing tablet you get. I made a video a while back with tips on how to buy a drawing tablet based on your budget and your needs and wants, and you can check that video out here. But if you're buying something like an iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, you don't need a computer. It's built in. But if you're buying a tablet like mine, you do need a computer. There are some tablets that work with smartphones, so if you don't have a computer and you can't afford something like an iPad, that could be a good option for you. And then follow up to that is what kind of computer do I need? So you really just need any computer or laptop that can run an art program. You can look up the requirements of the program you want to use to figure that out. So for example, if you wanted to use Krita, which is a free program, you need Windows 7 or higher, you need 4 gigabytes of RAM or higher, and a graphics processor with OpenGLU 3.0 or higher. So if you're thinking about getting a drawing tablet and you're not sure if your computer can handle it, I recommend downloading a free trial of whatever program you want to try out and see if your system can handle it before you spend the money on the tablet and the program. A lot of people want to know what tablet I use, and I use a Wacom Intuos Touch 5. It's very old at this point. I think I got it like six years ago maybe. So you're probably going to get something newer if you're shopping now, uh, probably for a lot cheaper too. Which brings me to the next question, what tablet should I get? So I did a whole video about tablet shopping. Uh, it covers different budgets and different specs and things that you might want in a tablet. There's a video in the description. You can check that out. But the short answer is any tablet in your budget. A $30 tablet is fine for beginners. You don't need a, a fancy brand. You don't need a screen tablet. You know, if you get a cheap tablet and you like it, you can always upgrade later and get more features. Another common question is what art program do I need? 
You can use any software as long as it runs on your computer. Krita, GIMP, and Autodesk Sketchbook are all free options, so I think that's really great for beginners to see if you like digital art. And they're good programs. I, I've heard a lot of good things. I haven't tried all of them in a few years, but I have friends who use them frequently, and they make beautiful work. Clip Studio Pro is another great program for illustrators, especially if you're interested in making comics, because it has a lot of features that make that a little easier. And there's a one-time fee for that program. It's usually around $50.00 but sometimes it's on sale for 25 so keep an eye out during you know special holidays, Cyber Monday, that kind of stuff. Adobe Photoshop is another popular option. It's kind of expensive though compared to other programs. It has a lot of features uh, that are great for you know graphic design and photo editing, so if you do stuff like that, you might like it, but it has a monthly fee, which is prohibitive for a lot of people, uh, and uh, I think it's important to remember that just because it's the most expensive program, that doesn't mean it's the best. Because it's not. I personally use Photoshop because I've been using it since I was 11 years old and I'm used to it. And honestly, that's it. That's my whole reason. I don't have a good reason for why I use Photoshop. Okay, this is a great question. Do you already need to know how to draw traditionally to get into digital art? I think if you've never drawn before, you can absolutely learn how to draw on a tablet, on a computer. I have a few friends that started out in art digitally. They never really drew before that, and they're very good. They learned a lot, and they are excellent artists. Most of the drawing I've done in the past 20 years has been digital, and so a lot of what I've learned has been as a digital artist. Uh, that said, it's not going to make the process of learning how to draw any easier. You still have to practice, you still have to do studies and improve your skills actively. And honestly, if you're trying to get better at drawing, I would recommend switching back and forth between traditional art and digital art as much as you can because you're gonna learn skills on both of those that apply and you're just gonna grow faster. I feel like I could do a whole other video on that topic, but that's my recommendation if you wanna get good at drawing is just draw as much as you can. <laughs> okay, this one comes up a lot. Does every version of Photoshop have smoothing built in? And unfortunately, no. Line smoothing or stabilization was added to the newer versions of Photoshop in the subscription service. So if you have an, uh, an Adobe subscription, then you have access to smoothing, which helps make your lines a little bit smoother and cleaner and, and less shaky. But if you're using an older version of Photoshop, you don't have that. But you could always get Lazy Nizumi, which is like a third-party plugin. Uh, I think it's like $30 uh, one-time fee. And it, it will add smoothing to Photoshop for you. So I highly recommend that if you're using an older version of Photoshop. All right, and this question comes up a lot for some reason. Is that bread? Why is there bread next to your tablet? I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, those were the most frequently asked questions, but I'm gonna run through some others that I thought were also good questions. Kate asks, how old are you and how long did it take you to be good at drawing? Uh, any guesses? Put your guess in the comments before I answer on how old I am. I'm 35 and I've been drawing my whole life, but I've gotten more serious about art, I'd say in the past three or four years. Indigo Beats asks, can I trace my favorite artist drawing to be as good as them? I actually made a whole video about this a while back, uh, about when it's okay to trace and when it's not, but the short answer is, yeah, it's fine, as long as you're not posting it anywhere or claiming it's yours and it's just to practice. Whoopty friggin' do asks, how can I draw and rest my wrist on the screen, in quotes, without disturbing my tablet? So since they mentioned the Wacom Intuos PS, which doesn't have a screen, uh, I think they just mean the, the tablet surface. And if your tablet doesn't have touch settings, you should be fine. It shouldn't register your hand. If you do have touch settings, uh, you might have to turn them off so that just your hand touching the screen doesn't interfere. I keep my touch settings turned off because I find them really annoying and distracting and I don't like it when the tablet can tell. So uh, just check your settings if you have a problem with that and you might be able to turn that off. Koi asks, my laptop doesn't have a disk spot, so can I just install the driver from the website without using the disk? Yes, and I would also add that you should check the website regularly for updates to the driver because they tend to update them often and your tablet will work better if you do.
Sato asks, why do you use old Wacom tablets instead of drawing directly on the glass tablets and flip style laptops? That is very easy to answer, and the answer is because I'm poor. Sydney asks, would this work on a MacBook Air? Uh, honestly, the better question here is, what program do you want to use and will it run on your device? Uh, this is true for any device. I don't know the specs of you know every laptop and, and tablet and whatever out there. So uh, you're going to have to look up the art program you want to use, see if it will run, and see if it's compatible. And experience says, the only problem I have is the lines are really shaky, and I don't know if it's the program I'm using, my hand, the pen, or the tablet itself. First of all, great username and icon. Uh, second, it really could be any one of those things, I guess. Uh, I'd have to know more about what you're using. So some programs like Clip Studio have line stabilization built in, and there's sliders and settings you can play around with. Uh, some programs don't have that, unfortunately. Uh, some tablets are known to be a little bit smoother than others, like Wacom and Huion. Uh, and really, ultimately, it does take a lot of practice. It, it could just be that you're not there yet, your hands are a little shaky, uh, and you have to get more confident with your line work, and that does take time. So I would say check your settings, see if your program has stabilization and how to adjust that, and just keep practicing. I think uh, that's that's really the best advice, so good luck. Selassie says, how do you get your artwork on the screen? So I'm assuming this question is about scanning your image in to, to get like a drawing on paper into the computer. Uh, so if you don't have a scanner, uh, you can use a cell phone. Cell phones are fine to take a picture. They're just about the same resolution as a scanner usually. Uh, you just have to make sure that you have really good lighting. So you might want to take a photo like next to a window where you have natural light. And you just want to make sure that your photo is as straight on as possible and that it's clear and not out of focus. And it should be fine. Just uh, get that on your phone, then email it to yourself, download it onto your computer, and draw over it. Adlium543 asks, do you know if you can use a graphics tablet with PowerPoint? Uh, so a tablet should work with any program as a mouse. I don't know if PowerPoint has pressure sensitivity capability, but if you're just looking for something that you can use a stylus to sort of mouse around a program, a tablet should be fine for that. And finally, Cave asks, advice for artists working with a mouse. Saving up for a tablet probably won't get one until next year. So yeah, actually, I'm gonna make a whole video about how to make digital art with a mouse. I have some friends who draw with a mouse, and I used to do it years ago, I'm a little out of practice. Um, but that said, I think even a $30 tablet uh, it is fine to start with. You don't have to get an iPad or you know the most expensive tablet. Uh, and there are even tablets that connect with your smartphone. So if you don't have a computer, you can still get something. And hopefully you won't have to save quite as long if you start off with something like that. You can always upgrade later. Okay, so I am out of questions. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. And thank you everyone who left comments and gave me your feedback. Sorry it took so long for me to actually answer all this stuff. I was kind of going through some stuff the past year or so. Um, but... Uh, Anyway, I'm probably gonna remake that video at some point and break things down a little bit better and be a little bit more clear. But in the meantime, I hope that this video helped. If you have any specific topics that you'd like to see me cover in the future, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to make a video about it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate everybody who followed this channel from that video and then maybe was a little surprised about some changes to the channel uh, and you guys stuck with it and uh, and I, I appreciate you. you. It means a lot to me and uh, yeah. Anyway, until next time, chase your dreams. Peace. Hi, I'm JL Draco and I'm a dream chaser. Did you know that if you get just 10 people to join the dream chasers on JC Chase's Patreon, JCF Chase will personally come to your house and teach you how to make and play your very own ocarina. And if you're not satisfied, all you have to do is mail in $50 with a statement of dissatisfaction and a postage paid self-addressed envelope, and JC will give you a full refund. So, what do you have to lose? Join the Dream Chasers at patreon.com slash jcchase.